name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world and world end. Amen. Good morning to all of you, and I welcome you as we offer this Holy Mass. One of the things that has taken place within our church, as well as other churches, is that we've held back from distributing the Holy Eucharist in the forms of consecrated bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ. But we also speak of a spiritual communion that takes place within the hearts of the individuals. And so before the beginning of Holy Mass, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, let us now turn unto the altar of God and confess our sins unto our Heavenly Father. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for His forgiveness, I will recite the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord, our God, for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us part in absolution and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. I rejoiced when they came, when they, when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, and now our feet are standing with your gates, Jerusalem. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, you gather us from the four corners of the earth through your holy word. Open the closed ears of those who wander, that they may hear your word, which alone brings peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 20th Sunday in the Ordinary Time, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right. Do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation, and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain, and make joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the nations of the world shall be converted and shall offer God true worship. All shall abandon their idols, which have deceitfully led them into error, and shall bless the, the God of the ages in righteousness. Turn to me and be safe. Hallelujah, The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans, brothers and sisters. I am speaking to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the Apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, that they too now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth. 
For I am God, there is no other. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to him, to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Brothers and sisters, just as you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. These words are taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Every single reading that is prescribed by the Holy Church to be read, to be prayed upon, and to be reflected, all have lessons to be learned. Whether it is the great spiritual truths of Jesus or the eloquence of St. Paul in defining the teachings and the faith of the Christian Church. Some people consider the letter of St. Paul to the Romans as being his most important book and letter outside the Gospels of Jesus found in the New Testament. For in Paul's writing, it gives Christians the core and the hope of their faith. The letter of St. Paul to the Romans basically formed the theology of Martin Luther the first of the great reformers of the Christian Church. In Romans, we hear that Paul describes himself as the apostle to the Gentiles, as Peter was the apostle to the Jews. We find that the early church was not first centered in Rome, 
but rather in Jerusalem. And the first meeting of the church took place in 50 AD, but rather by St. James the Lesser, considered as being a brother unto the Lord. But for the church to be established to the Jews and to the Gentiles, Paul brought the faith eventually to Rome. And it was in Rome that Peter was established as its first bishop and the first martyr of the apostles. We read that Paul was born a Jew and studied under the great teacher Gamaliel. Prior to his conversion on the road to Damascus, Paul was an enemy of the early church. It was after his conversion that he became one of the church's greatest proponents. In conflict with his own faith, he became the author of Christian theology. He states that in the glory of his ministry, he wanted to make his race jealous. Paul, being educated in the law, saw something more than just the law. And this is the basis of his teachings. I believe that the Lord Jesus chose Paul because of the eloquence. Not all the apostles of Jesus were educated men, but it was in Paul that he sets forth the standards of the Christian faith. Rome represented one of the greatest powers of his day, a city mostly of Gentiles, but also of Jews, and a city of a religion that paid tribute to the various gods of pagan faith. It was Paul, the doctor of the law, who presented in Romans his famous justification by faith. It is Paul that teaches that salvation is not built upon good works, but solely dependent upon the grace of God and the belief in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All of Paul's letters, which some have placed as many as 14, serve not only for the sanctification and the salvation of the individual, but rather the edification of the church. Paul sets forth in today's reading two great tenets of that faith. First, the reconciliation of the world through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and second, life from the dead, as promised by our Lord and Savior. And so, it is my hope that every time we hear the Word of God, we take it to heart, for in it is the instruction that leads us unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we all take the time to read, to meditate on the Word of God, which in our church, in our denomination, is a sacrament placed on the same level as the sacrament of baptism, as well as Holy Eucharist. I share with you some of the words of hope written by St. Paul in Holy Scripture. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, we read Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the commandment of God, our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, who is our hope. In the second letter to the Thessalonians, Paul writes, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God our Father who has loved us, and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, in the letter to the Romans, Paul writes, For in hope we have been saved, but hope is that which is not seen, and it is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? 
And finally, also in the letter of Paul to the Romans, we read, it is through Christ whom we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. May we all be sanctified by the holy words, that which is contained within Holy Scripture. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us in our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Who will not fear you, Lord, or glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you for your righteous acts have been revealed.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, accept the sacrifice for the salvation of your people. May it empower the witness of your church that those who go astray may be gathered in. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, O oh powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred ministry. And empowered by your grace and your strength, May we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. Therefore, we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants and handmaidens, O Lord. On this day, we offer prayer and remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry and the homeless, the unemployed, all those who have suffered from the coronavirus, those who are in the hospitals, as well as for their family. We also remember in prayer for all the abused and neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, for all who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and all present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless, countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord and Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, 
and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so great for the whole of humankind, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal bliss. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all, all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant it peace and unity according according to your holy will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns, God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament. Through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent to love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May I at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May we receive mentally, and may this temple gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, and who these holy sacraments have nourished. For you live and reign forever and ever.
I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, your gospel reaches to the ends of the earth, and those who receive it are gathered into your kingdom. For us who have shared your table and have been granted to your holy vine, may it always be good news indeed. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, again I welcome you as we offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Before we conclude today's service, let us offer up to God our prayers for our own intentions, again for those who are sick, suffering and dying, that the good Lord might bless those who are in need, whether it be a physical need a spiritual or a mental need. Let us also remember, as we customarily do, prayers for all the faithful departed. May God bless you, and may God bless you and your family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
and for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.